The 96L6 radar is often underestimated in Western commentary, dismissed as a support system rather than a decisive weapon. That view misunderstands how modern Russian air defense works. The radar is not a passive observer. It is an active battlefield participant. Operating in the C-band, the 96L6 is optimized for detecting low observable targets that slip past higher frequency radars, stealth aircraft flying terrain-hugging profiles, cruise missiles masked by ground clutter and drones designed to overwhelm defenses through numbers rather than speed. With a detection range exceeding 300 kilometers and the ability to track up to 100 targets simultaneously across all altitudes, it transforms the S-400 from a missile launcher into a fully networked kill zone, covering approaches from Poland, the Baltics, and western Ukraine. In practical terms, this means reaction time collapses from minutes to seconds. Target designation flows directly from radar to fire control systems. Missiles like the 40N6, 48N6DM, and 9M96 no longer wait for confirmation. They receive it in real time. In an age where saturation attacks define offensive doctrine, that speed is everything. Equally important is mobility. Unlike legacy Soviet-era radars that required hours to emplace and calibrate, the 96L6 can be deployed in under an hour. It can relocate, reorient, and resume scanning before enemy planners can adapt. Combined with multi-mode scanning, precision pencil beams for tracking, and sector scans for volume search, the system becomes exceptionally resilient against electronic warfare and suppression attempts. This matters because Ukraine has become a lab laboratory of modern conflict. Drone swarms, hybrid attack profiles, and electronic deception are no longer theoretical. They are daily realities. The 96L6 is a direct response to that battlefield evolution, and Belarusian crews, trained alongside Russian specialists, now operate it around the clock with manual override capability for complex engagements. This is not borrowed competence. It is an institutionalized capability. The operational context of this deployment matters just as much as its technical performance. Belarus received its initial S-400 Triumph Regimental Set in 2022 amid heightened Union state exercises and NATO expansion rhetoric. At the time, Russian systems were stationed near Gomel and Ziabrauka, forming a layered shield over Belarusian airspace. By mid-2025, parts of that Russian deployment were withdrawn to reinforce Russia's own air defense priorities. This created a moment of vulnerability, brief, but real. The arrival and activation of the 96L6 closed that gap decisively. Even more telling is where the sustainment happens. Training and maintenance at the 2566th Borisov plant allow Belarus to repair and service key components domestically. Western sanctions aimed at disrupting Almaz Ante supply chains lose their bite when local crews can keep systems operational without constant Russian intervention. This is strategic autonomy inside strategic alignment. Politically, the message is unambiguous. Minsk is not hedging, it is integrating. President Lukashenko's alignment with Moscow is not rhetorical. It is embedded in radar networks, missile stockpiles, and joint command structures, missile resupply, joint patrols, and air defense unification under the Union State Framework all point in one direction. Belarus is now a frontline air defense node in Russia's western strategic depth. For NATO planners, this complicates everything. Airspace over Belarus can no longer be treated as permissive, nor even contested. It is monitored, layered, and actively defended. This corridor has long been discussed in Western strategic circles as a vulnerability. The 96L6 Enhanced S-400 makes it a surveillance trap. 
Any attempt at hybrid maneuvering, aerial probing, or logistical buildup now unfolds under persistent radar coverage capable of detecting even low signature assets. At the same time, Belarusian airspace has become increasingly resistant to Ukraine's expanding long-range drone operations, which have probed borders since 2023 in search of exploitable seams. There is also a quieter but no less important effect – burden sharing. Russia's air defense assets have absorbed losses in Ukraine, forcing difficult trade-offs. Belarusian systems, now fully integrated under joint command structures, partially offset those pressures. This does not mean Belarus replaces Russian capacity. It means it multiplies it. Western analysts often speculate about alternatives, Chinese systems, arms control revival, de-escalation frameworks. But realities on the ground move in the opposite direction. The radar is already operational. The crews are already trained. The missiles are already loaded. And looking forward, the trajectory is clear. As hypersonic threats proliferate and drone warfare evolves, Belarus becomes a logical candidate for next-generation systems like the S-500 Prometheus. Each step further embeds the country into Eurasian collective defense and further complicates NATO's contingency planning without triggering open escalation. What matters most is not the symbolism of the deployment, but its durability. The 96L6 is not a temporary reinforcement, nor a rotational asset waiting to be pulled back when tensions shift. It is fixed into Belarusian force structure, manned by national crews, sustained by domestic industry, and synchronized with Russian command architecture. That permanence changes calculations long after headlines fade. For neighboring states, this means airspace assumptions built in the post-Cold War era no longer apply. Routes once considered marginal now sit inside continuous detection envelopes. Low-altitude profiles, standoff launches, and probing flights lose their ambiguity when observed by an all-altitude radar operating without pause. There is no warning phase, no adjustment window, only exposure. For Moscow, the benefit is depth. Belarus no longer functions as a buffer alone, but as an extension of the integrated air defense perimeter stretching from Kaliningrad to western Russia. Each radar track shared, each duty cycle synchronized, reinforces a layered system designed not for escalation, but for denial. This is the quiet architecture of modern power, systems that do not announce themselves, yet steadily narrow an adversary's options. The activation of the 96L6 does not change the map overnight. It hardens it. And once hardened, such structures are rarely rolled back. They are built upon. So that's for today's episode. See you on another report from the battlefield.